Grace and peace. It is day three of our challenge through the book, Shifting Atmospheres in Worship by Yule Phillips. Listen, if you have not gotten your book yet, you can get it on Amazon. The link is in the description of the video, or you can get it from the CCD bookstore and you'll get a signed copy. So we're going to go right in today. So we're going to go to page um, 141 of the book. This is the paperback version. I love the paperback version, but you can get both either versions uh, hard. This is a hard copy, sorry. I love the hard, I love them both, but this is the hard cover version. You can get hard cover or paperback versions. All right. So day two was challenging. <laughs> challenging is good though, right? Praise God. I hope you had time to go through the rest of that chapter. Um, this book is power packed. We're just... We, we are just touching the surface, but next year in 2023, we will go through this book again. We may do a five day journey through it. Um, next week, we're going through Abiding in the Vine. So if you don't have that, then grab that. That's a book that I wrote. It's a five day devotional, very short read, but five day devotional um, that we're going to go through next week. We go through it every year. So this will be our third year going through it yet. I think yeah, this, this will be the third time that we're going through it. All right. So this chapter today is chapter 32. It's called the atmosphere of chaotic order. <laughs> if you've, if you've never read it and you have the book, you're, you're, you're going to want to, I mean, all of these chapters you want to spend time in. This one is going to challenge your mind um, it's going to challenge your perception of things, but we know that this is based off of the word of God. So, you know, the word of God is a revealer. It's light. It's life. It's spirit. Um, the word of God also um, carries the ability to cleanse and to transform our mind. Amen. So read this with an open heart. And I'm, I'm telling you, I can't. I can't wait to hear some of the testimonies that I want to put. I want you to put it in the comment section once we get to the parted, you know, once you understand why you're putting it in the comment section. All right. I'm going to read um, starting at the beginning. This is page 141. The atmosphere of Earth in Genesis one was chaotic water. God did not get rid of the chaotic waters. I'm going to read that again. God did not get rid of the chaotic waters. Instead, he expressed authority over the chaotic waters. Yesterday, we talked about how, um, how in shifting atmospheres, we have to know the heart of God. We want to know what he wants, what he doesn't want. And so that we can govern atmospheres, the Bible says all things work together. So atmospheres work together for good for them that love God. And the prerequisite for that, the requisite was to love God. That was the first staple, so to speak, love God. Um, so in here, it says he expressed authority over the chaotic waters. Keep yesterday in mind, these same chaotic waters are inside of us as the human body is 60% water. God even reserved some of the water for himself as he separated the waters into, into the waters of heaven and the waters of the earth. The reality is that we are swimming in organized chaos or chaos that has been conquered. The chaos was not eliminated. Rather, the chaos took a different it took a different form when brought under a higher authority. The chaos took a different form when placed under a higher authority. God never destroyed the darkness in Genesis 1. Rather, he expressed dominion over it. God created lights to govern or express dominion over the darkness. For the past couple of weeks, 
And every time I share my a part of my personal testimony, because some some of the things that I've experienced, I'm taking to, to the grave. The Lord has 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 said that I'm taking this stuff to the to the grave. And so I'm sure some of you have that too. Some of it I can share. But after I share my testimonies, I go through a time when I just remember and recall the goodness of God, his grace, um, his mercy towards me, his love, his patience. You know, I go through sorry, I go through days when I just am, 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 am humbled by that. And, and I'm just um, I, I, it's just unfab, unfathomable, if you will. Um, it's hard to imagine um, a, a God so gracious and loving, yet so all powerful and almighty and so gentle. And, and it's just, so yeah, I, I go into that. <laughs> but um, I also think about my healing process. And I remember asking the Lord, why did I have to go through this? Why can't you just heal me right now? Why do I, why, why, why does it have to be a process? Why can't it just be a miracle? Why can't you just take this Paul, right? Why can't you just take this thorn? The Bible says, Paul said, I, because of the amount, this is Paul, because of the amount of revelation that I'm receiving and all these things that I have the ability to do and these accesses into the realm of the spirit, the revelations that I get because of all of that. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, to keep him at a place of humility, if you will. I'm paraphrasing, but a messenger of Satan to buffet me. And he said, I asked the Lord three times to take this. And God said, no. He said, my grace is sufficient because when you're weak, you are made strong. And you can rely on my strength. So when I was going through that and I asked, Lord, why can't, why does it have to be a process? Why can't it just be healed? And I thought about the human body. There's, there's, there's only a, a few, if you will, out of the whole span, span of humanity, miraculously healings happen. Otherwise, the body has the ability to heal itself or to, to recover, right? Naturally recover. And you know, I thought about that. I said, well, you know, the human body takes time. So I guess that's what, and the, the, the Lord said, no, I, I want you to experience me and know me in the fellowship of sufferings. I want you to experience me walking with you through this chaotic water. No, I'm not going to stop it. No, I'm not going to change it miraculously into um, into this beautiful sunrise and the water is so peaceful. No, you're going to walk through the chaotic waters with me because I'm going to teach you how to have dominion and authority over it. Sometimes, and I, that's why yesterday we talked about the price. Everything that we do artistically, there's a price. If, 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 you, if you do something artistically and there's oil in it, means there's anointing on it, somebody paid a price for that. How do you get oil? Something has to be crushed. Something has to be obliterated for oil to come. Somebody paid a price for that. So, you know, I, one time I asked the Lord, listening to this singer, and um, I said, oh, man, Lord, I want to sing like that. How do I sing like that? He said, you got to go through what he went through to get that. I said, never mind. No, sir. Thank you. I, I have enough. <laughs> I've gone through enough that I need to work out my own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. But God did not miraculously, if you will, he said, I'm going to teach you how to govern this. And see, and I, I get I get I get tripped up here, too, because when you think about authority, I think about how how man or humanity perceives authority. But the Bible says his ways are not ours and his thoughts are higher than ours. So even our man made, if you will, 
theories of authority is not right. We can only find it in the word of God and what he means by having authority over something. Just like here, Genesis 1, the chaotic waters, God did not destroy them, but he left them, but he put things in place to govern them, to have authority over them, to be responsible for, so to speak. So in our last day in this challenge, I, I want you to read the whole thing. I want you to read the whole, whole thing. It also talks about how chaos can expose things in us. You know, everything is on God's leash, right? Everything. And sometimes that's hard to understand, but it, it, it is. Um, I want to read on page 142. I want to read this. Because I want to keep this in context. The truth is that if we find that the atmosphere is not shifting in the direction that we think it ought to be shifting in, then we must ask ourselves more questions. What is the atmosphere trying to expose in us? What is the atmosphere trying to separate us from and expose us to so that we may discover something we never have noticed under our prior circumstances? What new opportunities will either the chaos or the Holy Spirit reveal in us? What new movement does God want to create in the atmosphere that is still under his authority? Sometimes the way to a new choreographical phrase, movement style, is through chaos. Sometimes new um, ways to hold a flag, to flag, is through chaos. Sometimes the most um, eloquent of speech comes in chaos. Sometimes the most powerful preaching comes when you're in the midst of chaos. Because you, the Lord and the Holy Spirit is teaching you how to navigate and have authority over chaos. He doesn't take it. He doesn't have to take it. Not when his sons and daughters are here on the earth, given his authority seated in heavenly places, high above all principalities and powers, then why aren't we still moving forward in things? Do you know, lastly, checking our time. When I, when I had, when I was pregnant with my daughter, um, difficult pregnancy, I was on bed rest a lot, was fainting. I was anemic, um, very, I had to get uh, iron infusion, infusions, um, IV iron. I had to go to doctors twice a week. Uh, my blood pressure was soaring. I had to be induced, to make a long story short. I had swelling all in my legs and wouldn't go down. And um, I, I, I did what I could in regards to ministry, but I was on bed rest. So I couldn't, you know, I couldn't teach. I couldn't dance. I couldn't do really anything except read and try to study. So I was battling um, fibroids as well and had the baby. And I waited a year. I had to wait a year to have the fibroid removal surgery. I had 11 fibroids. And I won't go through, but it was a whole... But... In that time, even when I was waiting to have the surgery because my iron levels were never high enough to have it, when they got high enough, I was able to have it. But in that time, you know, I was I was tired all the time. I didn't have the strength. I didn't have the energy. Um, I couldn't think clearly. I was still making videos. That's when I started to do. <laughs> I started to pray on Facebook. I started to do things because I felt like. Okay, so I can't physically dance. I don't have the strength or the stamina. I, I, I can't teach the way that I used to. So what can I do? And I asked the Lord. And he said, you can still do what I've called you to do. You just got to do it a different way. You have to lay down what you want 
you have to put it on the altar. You have to see this thing differently. If you see it as woe well as me, you're going to stay right there. You're not going to produce a thing. But if you allow me to teach you how to navigate and how to have authority over chaos, you're going to birth things and do things that you never thought you were capable or able to do. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why I'm sitting here on this YouTube channel, because all that happened during that time. I created this YouTube channel years ago, but did nothing with it. And it wasn't until that season that I started to move forward. And then I started to birth out programs, literally. I think in one year, four new programs, diploma programs at Christ Center School of Ministry, online program certification programs, books. That's what I started to write. I'm on my fourth book now that should be out uh, called, it's called Called Into the Sacred. That's when my husband started to author books as well. Shifting Atmospheres in Worship, Dance Musicality, um, The Coronavirus Prayer Guide, um, A Devotional for Teachers. My husband wrote too. We, we started birthing out things. Navigating through chaos and allowing the Lord to teach you how to have authority over it. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to some, some of you right now that are in these situations and you want out immediately. And you feel like you can't do nothing else. I'm here to tell you, you can still do something. If you're not getting out, the Lord knows the way that you should take. He makes all things work together for good. It's working for your good. You have to believe that and know that God's intention for you is good. His thoughts for you is good, which means there has to be goodness in this situation somewhere. That's his promise to us. It's his promise his promise. So, you know, you want to move in the arts with authority. You have to learn how to have dominion over chaos. And he has to teach that to you. It's nothing that you can do because you have no power in and of yourself. Everything that we have is lended to us. It's lended. Right? These gifts of the Spirit are His gifts that He gives to us. This anointing is ancient. Right? It's an ancient anointing that we are moving and flowing in and operating in. It's not ours. When we say, Lord, my life is yours, guess what? Your life is no longer yours. When you say, my body is a living sacrifice, that means your body is no longer yours. And when you think it's yours, then you'll have, you'll have your authority over it. When you give it to him and say, Lord, do what you will, he's going to do what he wills. And you have to allow him to. And whatever you need to learn, you need to learn it and get through it. Amen. I wish, you know, when I was pregnant, one of the things that I really, I'm sad on, I, did, I took like no pictures. I have like no pictures. I have one picture of my bridal shower, just one. Because that's how I, I didn't want to remember. It was a hard time in my life. It was a hard time. But I should have took pictures. I should have, I should have, do you know what I'm saying? I have that kind of should have. Make sure you don't have that. When you're in these situations, when chaos is all around you, the Lord is teaching you how to govern it, how to have authority over it. Allow Kim to teach you. Allow Kim to walk with you in it. Amen. Shifting atmospheres in worship. You can't shift nothing that you don't have authority over. You can't have authority over chaos in your life when you, when in somebody else's life, when you're trying to minister to them and you don't have it within yourself. Now, will, let me just say this, will the Lord's will be done speeding that he will use someone that's not even living for him, an atheist, someone that doesn't even, and, and I, I, I may, I may have this wrong, so let me just uh, say this. Someone that doesn't believe in his existence at all and use him for, for his glory to reach his people. He'll use anything and anybody to get to who he needs to get to. So don't be, you know, don't be, um, 
a glaring at someone that's being used mightily by God, but their life's jacked up. You need to be praying for them. But know that God is using them to reach people. It's not theirs. As the Bible says, many are going to come and say, I prophesied in your name. I did all these mighty wonders in your name. And he's going to say, I didn't know you. I used you. But I didn't know you. Yes, Yeah, I used you to get to them. But you, I, I don't even know you. You never spend time with me. We have no relationship. Allow him to walk with you in the chaos. Get to the other side of it. So that when you stand before people in your artistry and whatever that looks like, you have the authority of God. You have oil that you paid a price for. <sighs> That's it. I, that's it. We're 20 minutes in. I just believe in 2023, God is really going to start to showcase the arts. There's going to be a renaissance. I've been saying this for years, but I really believe that we are on the brink of it right now. And we have to get ready. We have to get ready. I'm going to say this again. We have to get ready which means we need to be in our word more. We need to be praying more. We need to be spending time with him more. We need books like this in our arsenal that challenge us, that provokes us, that stirs us, that pushes us to our knees to pray, that pushes us to our word, that pushes us into his presence. Saying, Lord, if you find anything in me, take it. Lord, if you need me to sit down for a year, I'll do it. God, if you need me to sit down in 10 years, I'll do it. God, if you need me to lay this down, I'll do it. God, if you need me to do that, I'll do it. God, if you need me to say this, I'll do it. I'll do it. Just obedience. Get to that place. Amen. I'm Listen, I'm praying for us all. <laughs> I'm praying for us all. Amen. Because God has great things in store for us great things in store for us and we have to get through to the other side and allow him to teach us and we'll say this again how to have authority over chaos amen all right so that's it um that is our first journey in this book shifting atmospheres of worship of worship um in worship sorry if you haven't gone over day one and day two please do that um Write down what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Write down strip scriptures that come to mind. Journal as well. Um, next week, we are doing Abiding in the Vine. And um, yeah, it's going to be wonderful. If you're interested in any of the programs that I mentioned, I'll put a link in the description of this video. But the next coming weeks, I'm going to be sharing with you more about Christ Center programs um, so that you don't miss an opportunity to enroll and get what you need so that you can fulfill the ministry call and the assignments that are on your life amen listen this is pray dance prophesy prophesy i don't think i mentioned that if you've never subscribed please hit that subscribe button don't forget to turn your notification bell on so that you're notified when i do a video all right know that i'm praying for you i love you god bless you <laughs>